Hello everyone, my name is Anton and this is What The Math. In today's video we're going to escape our beautiful blue planet and go for a little ride 1200 light years away from our sun and from our planet Earth to an exoplanet or actually a system of exoplanets that is probably the most fascinating system we've found so far where one day we're hoping to possibly settle. Welcome to What The Math. And so where exactly are we going? And if you have Space Engine, you can actually follow me along. We're going to Kepler-62. You may have already heard about this system, you may have not. It is going to be in the news for many, many years to come because this here is a system that has not one, but possibly two planets in habitable zone. Now we're gonna explore each of these planets. They're actually all of them are represented pretty well or somewhat well in Space Engine. And we're going to start with, uh, I guess the star itself. This is um, Kepler-62. It's a type of a star known as K type of star. It's a little bit less bright, a little bit less massive than the sun. As a matter of fact, this is about 70% the mass of the sun and about 64% the radius. And because it's less bright, because it's kind of, I guess, less powerful, it doesn't emit as much radiation. So here, having things like magnetic field is not as essential as it would be if the sun was, a, or if the star was a little bit more massive and more powerful. Now, it has three exoplanets very, very close to it. So here we're talking about 62b, 62c, and 62d. And let's actually take a look at them first. Um, all three of them are probably a little bit too close for comfort. So here it says temperature is 1000 degrees Celsius. Uh, a little bit, a little bit too hot for my comfort. I don't know about you, but I generally tend to die if it's 1000 degrees Celsius. But this is basically the surface of this beautiful, unusual planet. This is what it looks like. If you were to look into the sky and see the star in the sky, we're going to accelerate time a little bit just so you can see how it actually orbits around it. This is 62 be the closest planet to the star. Now, this we don't really have much hope for. We are fairly certain that it's probably very, very hot and possibly some kind of a hot Jupiter or some kind of a super Earth that's very, very, very hot because it's actually more massive than Earth, but it's also a little bit too close to the star. The next one is also still a little bit too close. They're within um, the inner regions of the solar system. And this is 62 C. Uh, in this particular game, it's also a scorched, uh, scorched desert. So these are actually represented as terrestrial planets here, but we're not sure if they are. They might be actually gas giants or smaller gas giants known as um, super Earths or mini Neptunes. And here we're talking about scorched or hot Neptunes. And this uh, third one, 62D, once again, a little bit too hot. Here the temperature is a little bit uh, less. It's uh, 800 degrees Celsius, but it still looks about the same. They're very, very beautiful, but they're also not very hospitable, seemingly hot, and probably will kill you in seconds. Now, the next two, however, are very interesting. So as you can see, there's actually a gap between them. And we have two more planets here called 62E and 62F. Now, 62E is a little bit of a mystery. Uh, in this game, it says the temperature is 400 degrees. We don't think it's that high. Uh, it might be actually much lower. But um, this, we are almost certain that this is actually a terrestrial planet. It has hard surfaces, it's a terrestrial planet. We basically have a planet like Mercury, a planet like Mars, Venus, or Earth. Now, we're not sure if it's that hot. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. What we are sure about is that it's about 60% larger than Earth, in terms of size at least. And because it's so much larger than Earth, it receives more sunlight. And because it receives more sunlight, it is possibly a little bit warmer than we want it to be. So maybe this is not exactly the world we're looking for, but we're nev we never know. If the atmosphere here is actually not very thick, if the atmospheric pressure here is very, very low, um, in, uh, it might actually be um, hospitable. In this game, the atmosphere here is 7.5 thousand times higher than Earth, so this is why it's so hot here. It's basically because of ridiculous amount of greenhouse effect. But in real life, it might not be the case. And then we have, of course, our last planet that we're super interested in, and this, is, of course, is the planet known as Kepler-62f. Now, it doesn't actually have a real name yet, but we should totally name it. I propose uh, Antonia or possibly just Anton. 
but that's just me. I'm not a mythological creature, so it's probably not going to be that. It has to be a mythological creature or a god or a goddess of some sorts. Anyway, so here we have this planet called Kepler 62F. It's a hot Oceania. Here the temperature is a little bit higher again, but it might not be that high. But uh, so the interesting thing about this planet is that this is so far the biggest candidate we've found for sort of like a hospitable planet where we might be able to settle one day in the future. I'm going to actually land on the surface so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, we've run several simulations, and when I say we, I don't mean myself, I actually mean um, scientists in different universities, specifically here, I believe it's in UCLA, they've run thousands of simulations trying to find out, you know, what kind of a surface pressure or what kind of a composition it would need to have to, to be hospitable to us, and there's quite a lot of different combinations that seem to work for this particular planet. Now, the thing is, in this game, it has a ridiculously high atmosphere again, so if you actually land on the surface, you won't be able to even see the sun. I think it's like a blob that get, appears for a few seconds. You're going to see it in a, in a few seconds as, as I accelerate time here. Here it is. Where is the sun? And so here, here's the horizon, and if I look up, the star, Kepler-62, is actually right here somewhere. It's basically this blob that you kind of see. Um, if I accelerate time here, you'll see that it actually kind of moves across the sky. But this is because of the really, really high um, atmospheric pressure here. Very similar, I guess, in, in, in a sense to what it would look like from um, Venus. Even though Venus doesn't have that high of atmospheric pressure, but nevertheless. So th this is essentially what the, the planet is represented like in this game. And it might be that, it actually might have such a high pressure for all we know. But so yeah, the interesting thing is that many simulations work and make this a habitable world. It's called Oceania because we think it has a huge amount of water. As a matter of fact, maybe there is actually no surface at all because there's just lots and lots of water here. But maybe it does have some mountainous ranges that sort of stick out from, from the ocean where we could technically land and live. Also, because its radius is relatively small, but its mass is also kind of uh, quite massive, we are almost certain that this is not a mini Neptune, this is not a gas giant. Um, if it had a radius of over 1.6 radii of Earth, then maybe this was a gas giant, but because its radius is only about 1.4 radius of Earth, so it's only a, bit, a little bit bigger than our planet Earth, we are almost certain that this is actually a hard surface planet where we can definitely land. And so um, we've been kind of trying to study this particular planet and the solar system for quite a while now. Uh, we've even discovered that apparently if you look at the star at Kepler-62 from within the atmosphere, it will kind of look peachy in color. It's not going to be like our sun yellow, it's going to be peachy red. So this is how much we already know about this, this particular planet. And uh, really what fascinates us about this is its distance from, from the star. I'm going to go into Universe Sandbox and show you um, what this distance means. So it's actually right here. And let's actually switch programs and go check it out in more detail. And so here is Kepler-62 in Universe Sandbox. You can kind of see that some of the planets here, specifically 62C, seems to be actively ready and is losing mass really, really fast. Oh no, I think it's going to disappear. That's not real. Anyway, so this is Kepler-62, and what I wanted to show you is this. I actually wanted to show you the habitable zones in this system, so you can kind of get an idea where these planets lie. So 62E is on the outskirts, and 62F is also on the outskirts, but on the other side. Both of them are sort of within the habitable zone, which is, of course, the green ring you see here. And this is, of course, the area we refer to as a Goldilocks zone, because this is possibly where it's it's possible for us to have liquid water and obviously life. Now, why is this important? Well, because we've been looking for planets in this region for a very long time, and finding two of them is very unusual. This actually gives us the highest possible chance of finding a planet that either has life already, or that we can later use for colonization sometime in the future when we figure out how to get here because it's 1200 light years away which is really 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 far away. Now all of these planets are simulated a little bit differently in this game than in Space Engine so here you can kind of see that this is actually a frozen world uh, that's a little bit less massive than Earth so this is not exactly correct we need to change this to about I think it's about one point 
1.4 radii of Earth, so it's going to be a little bit more massive. And uh, obviously it should be a little bit warmer as well. But in this case, I think it doesn't actually have any atmosphere. So if it has no atmosphere and it's lying on these outskirts, its temperature is going to be minus 65 degrees. However, if it does have, let's just say, one atmospheric pressure of atmosphere, just like Earth, in that case, the temperature might increase a little bit because of the greenhouse effect and it will then become, let's find out what it's going to become. It's already over 25 degrees Celsius, so it's actually already quite warm. Now, so the thing about this particular system, oh, and by the way, this, uh, this planet actually takes only about 267 days to orbit the star. Um, but yeah, the interesting thing about this system is that like I mentioned, the star is not as powerful, so it doesn't actually create as much radiation. So it's a lot, um, a lot less likely to create uh, dangerous uh, rays and dangerous radiation that would actually uh, cause harm to life. So here, even if this planet doesn't have a magnetic field, it might still be um, habitable for life of all kinds. Um, we've tried to listen to signals from this particular star using SETI. We haven't heard anything, and if we actually have heard anything, it would have already been about 1200 years too late. Um, but yeah, so no SETI detection, so if there's aliens, they're either just like us, uh, basically learning to do uh, things at this particular moment and still haven't really sent us anything or have sent us anything and we'll probably hear it in a thousand years, or there's nothing here. And even though we technically don't really know the exact composition of the atmosphere, the exact mass of this planet just yet, um, the future telescopes, specifically James Webb Telescope, which is going to be launched in 2018, is actually going to be able to analyze this in more detail and even find out the density, the uh, composition of this layer right here, which is the atmospheric layer. So it's uh, going to give us a lot more details about Kepler-62f and possibly even finally answer the question of whether we should actually try to get here and bring some colony ships and uh, obviously colonists that are willing to go so far away, or if it's a planet that's ridiculously hot or ridiculously cold or possibly just a big ocean. Another really interesting thing about this particular system is that K-type stars actually live much longer than um, G-type stars, which is of course our sun. So our sun is going to be dead and this star is still going to be going. Uh, they usually live two to three times longer than um, G-type stars. So if one day humanity reaches a point where we just need to escape our system because our sun is about to explode, this might be actually a very good system to go to because it will still be around for at least 10 more billion years after our sun is gone. But there is one small uh, requirement for these two planets that we need for them to be habitable. They both of them actually have to have quite a huge amount of CO2. We need to have CO2 for the greenhouse effect because without the CO2, even if there is uh, quite a lot of atmosphere but there's no CO2 on the inside, um, or any kind of greenhouse gases, that is. Um, there is just not going to be a warm enough temperature for us to feel comfortable living here. But if there is too much CO2, it might turn into Venus. And let me demonstrate this by making this like, I don't know, 100 atmospheres. It might turn into Venus, and as you can see, the surface temperature is dramatically increasing every day. And it will then become this, a desiccated dry world. Even though it's relatively far from the star, it will lose all of its water and become a deadly hot planet that basically has no, no life or nothing on the surface. So we just hope that it does have this right composition of atmosphere and CO2 for us to kind of possibly live here. And I guess we'll find out one day, or hopefully we will. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is that Kepler 62F and 62E, they actually have a very interesting pattern called, called resonance. I'm gonna show it to you by zooming in here. Um, so I'm going to align them first. And here they are kind of aligned right here. Uh, their resonance is called 2 to 1, meaning that for every two orbits of Kepler-62e, uh, you get one orbit of 62f. All right, so they're not exactly in resonance in this game, but they should be. So every time this orbits once, this planet orbits twice. And that's, of course, a pretty cool resonance to have. This means that they've been around for a very long time. They've established this very sort of predictable and very stable pattern. 2 to 1 resonance is actually very stable. And what this suggests to us, um, what this kind of uh, tells us, is that uh, this system has been around for a long time and is possibly very, very stable, which is actually good. Now, this is what would happen if, if Kepler-62F had an atmospheric pressure of 100 atmospheres of Earth, 
it would become approximately 600 degrees Celsius in temperature, just a little bit hotter than Venus. And it's kind of like super, super hot and melting on the surface here. But nevertheless, I think everyone at NASA and other space agencies, including myself actually, are hoping that this is not the case. We're hoping that this is actually a habitable planet. And we're hoping that we finally discover technology that can take us here because settling here would be absolutely awesome. Now, still don't have a name for this system, but we should definitely name it soon because this is probably one of those systems that is one of the best hopefuls for now that may actually harbor life right now or possibly in the future if we come here. And I think that's all I wanted to say about Kepler-62, which I unfortunately warmed up a little bit too much, so I'm going to possibly bring it down a little bit to the normal temperature that it had before, and we're going to return some of the water to it. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. If you've enjoyed this video, give a like, and also share this video with someone who you think may want to learn more about space stuff, and science, and also math. In the next video, we're going to talk about something else, mathematical, scientific, or spacey, and you're going to learn something else. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for all of your support. Game you later. Bye bye. And I'm going to try to cool down this planet and return some of the water to it, making it a beautiful, terraformable, and terraformed planet known as Saint Antonius, which is not exactly a mythological creature, but you know what? This is as close as I'll get to having my name somewhere on a planet anywhere. Anyway, here we go, look at that beautiful water returning, and this is going to be a terraformable planet, or terraformed planet, in a few seconds. We just need to decrease the water just a little bit, because there is a little bit too much of it here. And beautiful, mission complete, welcome to the new world. Let's hope that this is going to be our new home sometime soon. Game you later, bye bye.